those who enjoyed my name dp and a little bit of itaewon class will definitely enjoy bloodhounds 안녕하세요 여러분 저는 리입니다 오늘은 bloodhounds 드라마를 대해서 이야기할 거예요 i know I know, in my last vlog, I know I said that I would do a review for EXO Kitty next, and I do still plan to do that review, I've got it all scripted and ready to go, but I binged Bloodhounds over the weekend and I got so excited, so invested, really enjoyed the whole series that I just had to talk about it first. So let's just jump right into it with the synopsis, and I'm gonna just let um, Google take that away for me because they have the perfect short and sweet synopsis that does not give anything away. So Google says, Bloodhounds follows two young boxers who band together with a benevolent moneylender to take down a ruthless loan shark who preys on the financially desperate. A few other genre tags that I would add to this description to help you figure out if uh, Bloodhounds is something that you're interested in watching is action, for sure we are going to talk about the action. There is also some revenge underdog story going on and found family. As an action revenge story, Bloodhounds does not hold back any punches. This plot is not easy. People will die. You better just strap yourself in right off the bat because there is some intense hand-to-hand -hand combat and fight scenes going on and there is one or two torture scenes. Well, watching a man get salt rubbed into his raw wounds isn't necessarily my personal cup of tea. I did really appreciate that the show went there. This is showing the harsh realities of an underground war. I also really appreciated how especially the younger cast reacted to the violence around them. I found it a very genuine reaction because for the most part, even though our two main young boxers are undeniably badass from the very beginning, they're still human and green in comparison to the hardened knifers who really take them under their wing. But our two male leads being fresh to this kind of environment actually lent itself to a, a really engaging story and journey of them having to harden themselves both physically and mentally to be able to get the things done that had to get done. And I absolutely loved how at the very end, the two sit down and have a conversation together about how they have changed and, and the sacrifices that they had made and whether or not it's possible to go back to their old selves. Another aspect of Bloodhounds that I genuinely loved was the focus on found family. Our two young boxers, the male leads, have wonderful chemistry right off the bat and it was lovely to see these two specific actors get to shine in these roles. Them together, perfect. But then they are also a great trio with the two girls who end up coming in and out of the group. The first girl is the adopted granddaughter of the so-called benevolent moneylender that they team up with in the beginning and I really loved their relationship like the three of them together it gave me like good camaraderie like friendship vibes I think if they had had the time to develop this relationship more like through the years this would have been a lifelong friendship for sure the the banter is there and then the second girl is an archer that comes into the story a bit later and their trio dynamic was definitely one of like a younger sister and her older brothers. I <laughs> There's this one scene and I promise it's not spoilers, but the the three of them are about to witness some torturing happening. And the torturer tells them to cover the archer's ears. Like she doesn't need to hear what's about to happen. So one of them goes over and like covers the ears, but then the other boxer goes over and covers her eyes and it was so unbelievably adorable. 
So along these similar lines of a found family, and there's definitely other dynamics of a found family that I didn't really touch on or highlight, like the uh, benevolent um, moneylender Hadoboji and his granddaughter, they've got a great relationship going on. So along those lines, there's also this wonderful sense of mentorship. I got the strong feeling while watching this show of a torch being passed from the older generation who's been in this life for decades, teaching the younger group the ropes. Overall, it's minimal because the show is going so quickly that we don't get so much time to develop a lot of secondary relationships, which is a con. I'll mention that more in the con section but it adds a really lovely like bittersweet atmosphere to the show. I really liked the the torch being passed and the mentorship. Okay, so the last pro I will talk about is how Bloodhounds is highlighting the Korean hierarchy structure through the language and dialogue of the show. My Korean professors should definitely show that one barbecue scene that happens in the very I think it's the very first episode actually when our two boxers get together for the first time. Ah, 아, 그러면 너 아버님은 그 25살의 동메달을 따신 거네. 아니? 27. 브라. 너몇 살인데? 27. 어, 죄송합니다 형. 저 25이에요. 진짜 죄송합니다. 아, 이, 이거 이제. 아, 죄송합니다. 야. 네. 너 이제 뭐 똑바로 해. 알았어? 네. 알았어? 네. 뒤집어. 아, 안 돼요. 1번 더 있어야 돼. 괜찮아. 뒤집어. 안 돼요. 아, 이거 또 꼬집 이거. 군대 갔다 왔냐? 네, 저 아까 군대 갔다 와서 복싱 시작했다고 말씀드렸어요. 그러니까, 그러니까 내 말은 어디 갔다 왔냐고 어디. 처음 아, 알아 들어야지. 아, 네. 저, 저 해병대요. 야! 형도 해병이야. 몇 개야? 아, 네. 저 1, 1207개요. 필승! 1216입니다! 왜 앉아요? They're sitting around a barbecue and they're trying to figure out what kind of language they use together. Initially, they think they're the same age, but once they realize that one is 27 and the other one is 25, that adds a different um, dynamic to the group. But then when they realize that the one that is younger is actually the older one's senior in the military, that also changes it. It's a really great scene that like shows a few of the factors that go into deciding whether or not you should speak in panmal or tundemal with the other people in the conversation. So okay, maybe I should explain this a little bit because it is really confusing and I can understand if newbie K-dramas get totally lost in that conversation because most of the time subtitlers will not take the time to put in like brackets what certain terms mean. The Korean language has multiple levels of seniority and formality to them. Basically, if you are speaking to someone who is older or your senior at work, you would use more formal and polite language when you're talking up to them, but they might lower their language when they're talking down to you. It's, I know, it's a really interesting concept if you've never heard of something like this before. So if you've got a really good ear and you're really listening to the show, I think this is something that people develop with more K-dramas that they listen to or, and watch. If you listen to sentences and they don't have a yo at the end, then you can safely assume that the two characters are either similar age, similar social status, or one is just being super rude to the other. <laughs> because if you drop the yo and go into Padmal without a conversation or like a, a consensus of closeness and familiarity, then it can be considered really rude. A few other examples of how the speech will change instead of the full kamsamida, full thank you, you could hear kumawo or instead of annyeonghaseyo, you could hear annyeong. Um, what is a few other that? Instead of full characters' names, um, you could hear them switch to just oppa, nuna, hyung, anni. I almost forgot anni. So not only do you have the status and um, age factors at play, but certain professions 
like the Korean military will also give seniority and um, like a higher speech level to if they went into service before you. That's why that original example of the two boxers at the barbecue is this constant switching of levels that again is not very, that is not adequately explained in my opinion on what exactly is going on there because the the older one lowers his speech but then they find out that the younger one is a senior so then they level like they raise their speech and then at the end they just decide well, let's just lower our speech let's just be close <laughs> for me personally i found this recurring emphasis on language structure and hierarchy within bloodhounds so incredibly interesting and it just reinvigorated my interest in the Korean language and in my studies going forward. Hi, my name is Marie. I am a fourth year Asian studies student at UBC focusing on China, Japan, and Korea. <laughs> Moving on from that whole ramble about the Korean language. <laughs> So let's talk about the cons a little bit. I alluded to earlier that I feel like the show went really quickly. Again, it's only eight episodes long and it's very plot focused. I think personally it could have used with a bit more time just to develop characters' relationships a little bit more organically. I think a lot of conversations were had that were sharing backstory and sharing like personal trauma that felt a little bit dumpy to me. I, I don't feel like the characters themselves and also me with the characters had earned their trust enough to suddenly know all of their childhood trauma. I think the last two episodes, the finale of the show, its pacing suffered. It was a bit clunky and slow in aspects and I think they just had too much that they were trying to do all at once. The show did such a good job at building the stakes and then having the characters hit a low but then to get them back up and finally be successful. Um, hopefully you don't think that's a spoiler warning but be successful. It just was a bit too much of a downturn and slow moving. Like, <sighs> so My final con is that I found some of the characters to be a little bit cartoonish. It's like some of the the major antagonists or like the villains definitely seem to be fulfilling certain stereotypical roles. Like you had the tank that like wouldn't go down. You had like the the brains or like the snake of the group. Like it, it just seemed very um yeah, very cartoonish at some points. However, none of my cons were such an issue for me that it detracted from the overall enjoyment of the show. I have so many more questions about the characters, like I really want to get to know them better. I wish I had more time with them. So overall, I am going to give Bloodhounds a 4.75 out of 5 stars. That's a very high rating for me. If you are a fan of the action K-drama genre, this is definitely one you should check out. So let me know down below if you guys have watched Bloodhounds. Have a good day, have a good night, bye!